गुड आफ्टरनून एंड नमस्कार यू स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स यू ऑल आर वाचिंग ई विद्या चैनल नंबर एट एंड आवर यूट्यूब चैनल एन ऑफिशियल एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद दिस इज आवर वेरी स्पेशल सेशन दैट इज टीचिंग लर्निंग इंटरवेंशन फॉर इंक्लूसिव क्लासरूम आप सभी अपनी टी वी पर देख पा रहे हैं साइन लैंग्वेज इंटरप्रेटर मिस पायल सैनी पायल जी आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है नमस्कार पायल इस पूरे सेशन को साइन लैंग्वेज के माध्यम से यानी सांकेतिक भाषा के माध्यम से पूरे सत्र को समझाएंगी सो दिस सेशन इज फॉर क्लास एट स्टूडेंट्स एंड द सब्जेक्ट इज इंग्लिश एंड द टुडे चैप्टर इज चैप्टर सिक्स दिस इज जोडीज फोन एंड टू टीच दिस सब्जेक्ट अवर टुडे इज एक्सपर्ट इज मिस दिव्या गुप्ता मैम वेलकम मैम बहुत बहुत स्वागत है इस सत्र में नमस्कार मैम थैंक यू Ma'am is mentor teacher directorate of education. So ma'am will tell you about this chapter. So इससे पहले कि हम आगे बढ़े हम आपको बता देते हैं हमारे various medium where you can send your feedbacks, your queries, your questions. You can call us on our phone number that is eight eight zero zero four four zero five five nine. You can note down this is flashing on your TV screens, and you can also email us on our email ID that is dth dot class. Eight at the rate cit dot nic dot in. Apart from this, you can also send your queries, your questions on our YouTube channel that is NCRT official. So let's begin our session and we move to our expert uh, Divya Ma'am. Ma'am, uh, what is this chapter all about and uh, who is Jodi and who is Phone Ma'am? All right. So uh, this is a very uh, beautiful story. It's an excerpt from a novel, actually, a 1938 hmm. novel, and uh, it's a very short part that's taken from it uh, and incorporated in our textbook. Uh, it's about uh, a little boy uh, who feels very bad for a little fawn. Uh, his father gets bitten by a rattlesnake, and in 1938, I think the quickest home remedy available. to remedy a poison you know uh, you know a snake bite was to use a doe's heart and a doe's liver you know to extract uh, poison and save lives so when his father was uh, bitten by a rattlesnake uh, what they did was they killed a doe and uh, you know they used her, her heart and her liver to extract poison they went back home jody's father started recovering uh but uh, you know jody could never you know forget uh, about the little fawn that that doe had uh, you know right next to her and he kept feeling bad for that little baby uh, he thought that it was orphaned for uh, you know no fault of its own and he wanted to go back to the forest and bring him back home and uh, raise it Uh, he asks his parents for permission and after a little bit of uh, cajoling you know he gets the permission so he goes back and he brings the fawn back home and that's what the story is all about okay ma'am so this uh, chapter deals with so many human feelings ma'am it does so let's move on and start we begin this session and uh, take a look what all about in this uh, chapter right so uh, there are some very strong themes and then there are some underlying <laughs> themes in this lesson so assuming responsibility like hmm. jody goes and assumes responsibility of a uh, of a little animal who is so vulnerable so that's assuming responsibility then there is a sense of justice you know hmm. that we have killed his uh, mother for our benefit so now you know uh, justice should be served by you know hmm. taking that fawn in of course there's a sense of kindness and compassion and then uh, the very very old relationship that uh, man has with animals so animals. interdependence and kinship hmm. between man and animals hmm. that is also there as a theme in this lesson so we explore all of these as we read so ma'am uh, as this session is a special session teaching learning intervention for inclusive classroom it's, this is for inclusive classrooms so how will we explain this chapter to our visually impaired children ma'am right that's a great question so uh, what i very strongly believe is that visually impaired children do need external stimulus such as you know sounds of animals you know in this lesson like we have buzzards hmm. we have you know the sound of bleating of the doe or the bleating of the fawn hmm. or horse hooves at one point so we are going to use all of those sounds while we teach the lesson okay uh 
at the same time i would say that uh, visually impaired children are if uh, you know if not more than they are definitely as intelligent as uh, you know children who have sight hmm. so i would always begin a lesson by asking for uh, you know what they presently know you know hmm. for pre existing knowledge so i would ask uh, questions such as uh, what do you know about home remedies you know what are home remedies and w- particularly what can be a home remedy for a person mm. who has been bitten by a snake are all snakes poisonous mm. you know and then you know a very uh, debatable question uh, that is is it right to kill an animal uh, is it right to kill a human being or is it right sorry it's is it right to kill an animal for a human life and uh, if yes then why you know is is a human life more precious than an animal life mm. so all of those questions you know i think go into it and uh, those can be discussed along with the you know the scaffolding uh, that we can provide through sounds uh, yes. at the end of the lesson there's also a game called sound bingo okay. so we'll also be doing that mm-hmm. so we will take one by one first we will uh, discuss on the topic right so uh, the the you know the main questions you could say in the lesson are uh, what had happened to mm-hmm. jody's mm-hmm. father so uh, then how did they remedy it jody brings the fawn home does he do this act out of compassion or guilt now mm-hmm. children you know have to think about feelings here this lesson is not so much about uh, content in itself as it is about human feelings it's deal with uh, human feelings human feelings so yes. many feelings are so many in feelings. this chapter True. ma'am there's guilt and there's you know like there's uh, and they're expressed so beautifully at one point mm. you know uh, the writer says that the child is trembling when they meet mm. the child is trembling with joy quivering mm. with joy mm. while the fawn is quivering with fear mm. you know so quivering and trembling mm. uh, are are used uh, you know to show two entirely different expressions mm. very beautifully expressed uh, so here are some sounds that i would like to play So this is the bleating of the doe you know and then there is horses galloping and then there are eagles screaming you know who have come to eat the carcass of the dead doe so all of these sounds when we incorporate them into the lesson as mm-hmm. we are taking the class i suppose they will help a visually impaired learner mm-hmm. greatly then there are some questions that deal about you know ch- a child's psychology very deeply for example uh, when jody goes to the forest to bring the fawn back with mm-hmm. him uh, you know he sends milwil back he has come from home with a person called milwil mm-hmm. but he sends milwil back so why does he do that mm-hmm. so that's a very important question he does that because when he meets the fawn uh, if he meets the fawn he thinks if the fawn is alive and i get to meet him that meeting will be so private that i don't want to share it on the other hand if the fawn is uh, you know has starved uh, himself to death or you know is nowhere to be found then the disappointment that he will have he doesn't want that to be seen by milwil so this is you know how a child thinks you know he's a very private person and he doesn't want to express to milwil he doesn't want to share that experience mm. with milwil um then there's some critical thinking also involved such as uh, you know the story was written in 1938 did you notice any hints that suggested this so as the teacher reads the story aloud uh, to children uh, they have a chance to understand uh, you know and find uh, what are the differences between their mm. modern lives and life in 1938 for example uh, when jody brings the fawn back home and goes to the kitchen to bring milk for the fawn he brings it from a kitchen safe not from a refrigerator okay so that's what refrigerators were called mm. or probably that's uh, you know no refrigerators even existed so uh, very you know uh, subtle hints are given that show us that the story was written in 1938 mm. also people travel on horses mm. not in cars so you know hints like that are there it 
इट मीन्स इसमें जो ह्यूमन फीलिंग बताई जो अटैचमेंट दिस चैप्टर शोज बिटवीन अ फोन एंड द चाइल्ड द फीलिंग्स एक्सप्रेस किए गए हैं मैम इसमें सो द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन की भी बात कही गई है कि डिफ्रेंशिएट करना कि उस समय की ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कैसे थी उस टाइम के ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कैसे थी उसमें के बारे में भी बताया गया मैम सो लेट्स मूव मैम ऑल राइट सो वी बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ इट हैज़ टू बी एन इंक्लूसिव क्लास रूम सो द वोकैबुलरी द न्यू वर्ड्स दैट लर्नर्स लर्न इन इट आर यू नो शेयर विद चिल्ड्रन इन इंग्लिश along with meanings and then in braille also okay so uh, here are some new words that they'd be learning recollect uh, anxious emerged quivering convulsion ticket and precarious i've chosen very few but uh, these seem to be the new ones for a class 8 child let's read one by one first first is recollect recollect uh, which means to remember something and then anxious which means worried and afraid emerged which means to appear or to come out mm. of somewhere and quivering which means to shake slightly the next is convulsion convulsion is a sudden violent movement of the body and uh, an involuntary movement mm. that you cannot control thicket is a dense group of uh, bushes or trees uh, and precarious is uh, risky or hazardous or dangerous you know mm. in simpler language and then we have shared these words in braille so that uh, you know uh, children who are visually yeah. impaired uh, in our classes can also have access to this new vocabulary hmm. a small activity that we have here which again every child can do in this classes most times we do vocabulary we do new words but then children don't remember them because uh, we read words and word meanings and leave it at that hmm. so instead of leaving it at that we take it one step further and we ask them to share experiences from their own lives hmm. in which they can use those words hmm. so we would say uh, when do you feel anxious if they've learnt a new word that's called anxious we say when do you feel anxious hmm. or have you ever seen a thicket or is it safe or hazardous to travel alone hmm. to an unknown country or can you recollect when was the last time you sang a song hmm. so uh, when learners share experiences from their own lives using these words they are more likely to remember these words and use them in future so that's why this small activity we plan to do here and this the next one is my favorite uh, it's called the sound bingo hmm. so it's a very simple uh, activity again all learners can do it but this is particularly for you know children whom we want to include engage in our class and who are uh, visually impaired so uh, the teacher here you know plays uh, several sounds and uh, children have to identify which of these sounds uh, you know would you hear in a forest and which in a city so they have mm. to identify that so there are multiple sounds let's play them one by one let's ask you to identify oh, i will ask you to identify and uh, students will also identify and they will send the feedbacks also lovely Anna? yes let's do it a rain falling no this is a uh, buses traffic noise This is traffic. traffic That's noise. right. Well done. Doorbell. This is a doorbell. Door of a lion. Correct. That's the door of a lion.
All right. Now we move to our keywords. The keywords are enchanted, delirious, and third one is ecstasy. So now it's time for the homework, ma'am. Right. So uh, the homework is also very feeling based. It's very uh, simple but very feeling based. Uh, it is uh, imagine you finally get the pet that you had always wanted. Write diary entries for the first one week of living with your new pet. Ha uh, how have they changed your routine? Do they keep you busy? Do they look forward to your arrival from school? Do they obey you? So, uh, a lot of times what happens is, uh, children, you know, want a pet, but parents, uh, you know, do not agree to it. So, you know, finally you get the pet that you wanted, that you had always wanted. So, when you finally get that much coveted pet, how, how do you feel, you know, and, uh, you know, how uh, does the arrival of a new pet change your life? Uh, how have they, you know, changed your overall routine every day? Uh, when you are in school, do you think about them? Do they wait for you when you reach home? Do they do, do you find them waiting for you for your arrival? So all of that, uh, uh, you know, over a period of six, seven days, you know, write diary entries for that and, uh, you know, uh, maintain an account, a, a journal of how, you know, a new pet changed your life. So that's the homework. Let's move to a modified homework. Okay, ma'am. And then we have modified homework. So that is uh, the same thing. Uh, imagine you finally get the pet that you had always wanted. Write diary entries for the first one week of living with them. How have they changed your routine? Do they keep you busy? Do they look forward to your arrival from school? Do they obey you? You may use words and phrases from the magic word bank that is given below. Now what we've done here is to uh, sort of scaffold and help children uh, write uh, with more, you know, precision. What we've done is we've given them a magic word bank. So it has certain words that are usually defined to you, you know, usually used to define pets, such as enthusiastic, uh, smart, playful, disobedient. So you can tell whether your, uh, you know, whether your new pet is disobedient or is it very loyal or is it a very happy pet or does it dirty your bed or is it naughty or does it roll in mud. Uh, does it drink up milk? Does it hide the newspaper? Is it a good companion? Is it, uh, you know, a sharing companion? Is it a frisky pet? So you can use all of these words and phrases and create your own diary entries for at least one week. That's the homework that you have from this lesson. Okay, ma'am. So, we have given the homework to the students. So, we have the students who have late joined us. We have given the summary of the story. Who was Jody and who was Fawn. Right. So, we have given the story. Explain it. Sure. Yes, ma'am. So, so this is a story about a little child called Jody. What happens with Jody's father is that he gets bitten by a rattlesnake. उनको एक rattlesnake काट लेता है. और पुराने time में जब ये कहानी लिखी गई थी, उस समय rattlesnake के bite का या snake bite का जो quickest home remedy होता था, medical help मिलने के पहले जो किया जा सकता था, वो ये होता था कि कोई एक female deer, यानी कि doe का heart या liver निकाल के और उससे poison extract किया जा सकता था। So when Jody's father had been bitten by a rattlesnake, they used they killed a doe and used its heart and liver to extract the poison. Now Jody kept feeling guilty for a long time that you know they had to kill an innocent animal to save his father's life, and he wanted to make up for it. By bringing the fawn home, there was a fawn that this doe had, and uh, you know Jody wanted to go back to the forest and uh, bring the fawn home and raise it as a pet. So he spoke to both of his parents. Uh, they were not entirely, uh, you know, you know, encouraging. But after a little bit of request, you know, he was able to convince them, and uh, he went along with Mil Milville, uh, you know, he went on a horseback 
and uh, but just before the bushes uh, you know just before the forest started he told milveen uh, that he would make it on his own you know the rest of the journey he would cover on his own uh, because the bushes are too thick but the real reason was that he did not want milveen to see his disappointment if he found the fawn or his joy if he did not uh, if if he did not find uh, his joy if he found the fawn and his disappointment if he was not able to find the fawn so because he wanted to hide uh, you know that feeling from mil milvi he told him that uh, he could go back and you know he would find a fawn and you know find his way back home also so then jodi goes back uh, to the forest and looks for the fawn finds him their meeting has been detailed in the greatest uh, of detail you know how he's ecstatic to you know finally find this little baby that he had been dreaming of for so many days he touches its skin and you know he says it's so soft you know he's both of them are quivering with joy you know and quivering with the the boy is uh, quivering with joy and the fawn is quivering with fear and but the meeting is so happy for the boy he lifts the uh, fawn in his arms and he says that his legs are surprisingly long uh, and he has to actually carry it the highest that he can so he carries him as long as he can and then he gets tired but then he remembers that his father had told him that once a fawn has been carried it would follow the person who had carried them so then he puts him on the ground and sees whether he would follow and uh, the fawn does actually follow him so both of them then you know walk home where jodi feeds him milk and that's also a very interesting story you know how he feeds the milk so why, why, when he you know serves milk to him in a bowl uh, the doe doesn't know how to drink because you know he's a newborn and he has not had an experience of drinking out of a utensil so he kicks it and you know the milk spills and he doesn't know what to do with it but when jodi dips his own fingers in milk and uh, you know puts it in his mouth then he sucks greedily uh, and i'm quoting for the, from the text so then he you know and that's how he learns to drink milk it's a very beautiful story of how a child and an animal become friends and how you know they gradually become interdependent yes so, ma'am yeah. and we can also differentiate between the past time and the present time yes and uh, tell about so many things ma'am yes. about the transport uh, uh, today we are very uh, developed mm -hmm. in uh, transport and the, at that time only uh animal were used as a transport not only and, and this is not something that is explicitly mm -hmm. said in the story this is something that children derive Derived. from reading the story and aapne bataya tha ki fridge mein se wo us time pe fridge nahi hote the to usme bhi hum differentiate kar sakte hain bacche jo story sun ke wo pata laga sakte hain aur bahut sari feelings human feelings ke bare mein uh fawn and the the boy unke beech mein jo understanding thi jo kindness thi boy ki वो आ, हो सकती है बच्चे आ, हमारे जो स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स हमें वॉच कर रहे हैं वो बता सकते हैं कि उन्होंने क्या आ, फील करा इस स्टोरी के बारे में वो अपने फीडबैक्स हमें पहुंचा सकते हैं तो मैम आपने होमवर्क भी बताया स्टूडेंट्स को मॉडिफाइड भी होमवर्क बताया तो हम बता देते हैं हमारे स्टूडेंट्स को कि उनको कहाँ भेजना है स्टूडेंट्स को एक फॉर्मेट में आ, अपने आंसर्स भेजने वो है फॉर्मेट पहले आप अपना नेम टाइप करेंगे स्टूडेंट्स नेम अपना क्लास मैंशन करेंगे और उसके बाद आप एड्रेस uh, लिखेंगे स्कूल नेम लिखेंगे एक्सपर्ट नेम लिखेंगे आपने टीचर्स नेम भी uh, शामिल कर सकते हैं इसमें हमारे आज के एक्सपर्ट हैं दिव्या मैम आप उनका नाम लिख सकते हैं और आज की डेट मेंशन करेंगे और एक फोटोग्राफ भी लगा सकते हैं ये ऑप्शनल है और आपको भेजना है हमारे ई मेल पर ई करेंगे डी पर तो इस फॉर्मेट में आप अपने आंसर्स हमें भेजिए और हमें इंतज़ार रहेगा आपके आंसर्स का होमवर्क्स का और मॉडिफाइड होमवर्क का तो मैम आज के सेशन के लिए आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स हमें उम्मीद है कि आपको आज का चैप्टर बहुत ही पसंद आया होगा कि हमने काफ़ी डिस्क्राइब करा मैम ने आपको बहुत अच्छे से समझाया और मैं धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगी हमारी साइन लैंग्वेज इंटरप्रेटर पायल जी का पायल जी आपका बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया पायल ने बहुत ही बेहतरीन तरीके से इस पूरे सत्र को साइन लैंग्वेज के माध्यम से आप सभी को समझाया सो uh, स्टूडेंट्स so अभी बहुत सारे सत्र और भी हैं आप जुड़े रहिए ई विद्या चैनल से हमें दीजिए इजाज़त नमस्कार